Welcome to our YouTube channel. Our hope is that this message finds you exactly where you're at and that God speaks directly to your heart. Now let's take a listen. This may be a song that the captives can't yet sing, but if we sing long enough, they might join in with us. And this may be a dance that's too heavy for those chains, but if we dance long enough, well, the prisons will open up. Come on, put your hands together. This may be a shout that those fragile lungs can't bear, but if we shout long enough, the walls might find the fall. And they may need some help to lift their hands up in the air, but we know that freedom's coming, so we'll sing it all the more. We've been waiting all day long. A ring and rope is ready. We can see them coming now. Just like the prodigal, we're gonna meet them in the road. We're singing. Oh, oh, oh.
atmosphere is changing now. Yes, Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Come on, sing it again. The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around Jesus. For the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Casting out every fear. Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around for the spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is
Good morning, family. Wow, we are so blessed to experience the presence of the Father. We're going to transition into a time of communion. You may take, um, take out your emblems. And uh, I want to read a part of scripture to you. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 22, 19 through 20. Um, Jesus is having the, uh, the Last Supper with his disciples. And the Bible reads, He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And when I was uh, reading a bunch of different verses for the communion, this one is a very, very uh, common and popular communion verse. But the Holy Spirit prompted me. We needed to focus on the part where Jesus was saying, where he was instructing his disciples, almost a command saying, do this in remembrance of me. When he said, do this, what is he talking about? Do this. Take my body. Take my blood. Take my sacrifice that paid the ultimate price for all of your sin. Receive it. Take it. And I want to ask you guys, are we really taking his sacrifice? Are we really receiving his forgiveness today? It reminded me of a time when I had the girls, my daughters, I have two daughters, and um, they were young, and I was going through a hard time, and I was stressed out, and my daughter, my oldest, Alyssa, she was about four, and she wasn't listening, and I just, I didn't have self-control, and I spanked her, and she looked at me with her big eyes like, why did you do that? And I remember I was filled with so much guilt so much shame like how could I do that to my daughter she didn't deserve it and then I was living with, with, with feeling all those feelings and I started trying to do things to make myself feel better so I started playing tea party with her I did dress up we live at a park I bought her an ice cream at the park nothing I did made me feel better I still felt horrible about what I did Finally, I cried out to God, and Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I, I repented. I asked for forgiveness to the Father. I'm so sorry. Help me, Lord. And he prompted me, you need to ask your daughter for forgiveness. So there I was, asking my four-year-old daughter, Miha, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. And of course, she was fine. She forgave me in a moment. She actually felt she had the best day because I was finally playing with her and doing things, right? But our Father is just like that. He, he, we just need to go to Him, receive that, forgi uh, that forgiveness that He paid the ultimate price for for us. He's already forgotten about it. But are we living with that unforgiveness? Are we living in that shame, in that guilt, in that condemnation? Well, family, I'm here to tell you that that's not what God wants for you and me. He wants us to live in freedom and His forgiveness that He paid the ultimate price for. So, you may go, uh, we're going to go ahead in a time of prayer. And so, Father, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for everything that you've done for every single one of us. We thank you, Father God, for paying the ultimate price for our sins, Lord, so that we may be restored with you, Father God, and live in all eternity with you, Father God. So help us, Lord, to remember the sacrifice that you made for us every... Help us to remember that sacrifice, not just on Sundays, but every day. When things are getting tough and rough and our days are going hard, Father God, we can remember that what you did for us was so much more and that we can do all things through you, Father God. So we receive you today, Father, and we remember what you did for us and we love you and we give you all the honor and all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, you may take your emblems and I just want to welcome you all. Welcome home, family. We are so happy.
happy that you are here with us today and our, and our family at their home. Welcome, and we hope to see you here soon. Uh, for all of you that are new, uh, we want to make sure that once you leave that we have a, a team of, of very friendly people that want to meet you, our VIP team. We have a gift for you, so make sure not to leave. When you leave the double doors, they'll be waiting for you. God bless you. Oh, greet your neighbor, guys. <laughs> Are we hugging yet? There's some hugging going on. Still some distance hugging. It's good. It's good. Welcome, church. Welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you are spending Sunday morning in the house with us. We're going to continue to worship as we transition into um, a time of offering. Right now, there's ways to give or up on the screen. You can text, you can scan, you can use the app. If you're at home, just take your phone right up to the TV and scan the QR code and it'll take you to the spot. Last, last week, Pastor Eddie said something that I, that I know that we've heard that, uh, but it just kind of resonated with me. You know, we talked about we're not a, we're, we can't challenge God. We're not supposed to challenge God. Don't, don't, except in this one verse. I'm going to read uh, Malachi 3.10. Bring the full, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more room. It is the only time that we're allowed to challenge God, to question God. You know, in the Pastor Reddy last week, he talked about if-then statements. If you do this, then I'll do that. God, if you give me the girl, God, if you give me the job, if you give me, then I will follow you, then I will dedicate. That's not really the correct if-then statement. Scripture says, if you are obedient to me, if you follow my ways, if you put me first, then I will bless you, then I will. So God wants us to do something, then he will do something. So I challenge you, we can't outgive God. Trust me on that. He says that if we are faithful with our Giving, if we are faithful to what he has asked us to do, he will give us more than we know what to do with. He will give us more. Our storehouse will be overflowing. So just a be honest moment. If your house was overflowing with stuff, would that be good? Would that be all right? Would you go for that? So the if-then statement is, if you are faithful to what God asked you to do, in your tithing and it's not an amount it's not a money issue it's a heart issue it's a heart issue here if you are faithful here then he will be faithful so i challenge you church in in your faithfulness to god test god on this it says in this one thing it's okay to test him so i challenge you to test him today in your giving heavenly father we just thank you for the opportunity to come to you and faithfully give, Father. Everything that we have, we just get to borrow from you. You have, you have given it to be good stewards. You've given it to us to be stewards over it, to manage it. So, Father, I just pray today that we are good stewards of this tithing, that uh, as leaders of the church, we, we, we are mindful of the resources that you give us and that we use them properly. We use them uh, respectfully to build your church, to further your work, to further your kingdom, Father. We just thank you and honor you and glorify you in all that you do, Father. You are so good to us all the time. Father, we just glorify your name and we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Hey, we have uh, an announcement video that we'd like you to watch. And when the video is over, I would like you to give a big welcome to Pastor Don for our message.
What's up, Restoration Life fam? We are so blessed to have you with us today. Yes, if this is your first time here, welcome home. After service, head on over to our VIP team in the Breezeway. They want to pray for you and get you plugged in. And if you're joining us online, click on our Connect card in our live chat. Man, church, this Saturday, March 5th from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. is our Saturday morning prayer session. Our prayer sessions are when we come together and pray on specific topics that the Lord has placed on our leadership's heart, not just for our church, but for the entire body of Christ. So if you're a prayer warrior or an aspiring prayer warrior, let's bombard heaven together. Yes, for anyone who's completed our DNA classes, this one's for you. If you are interested in becoming a life group leader or hosting a life group, scan our QR code on our screen to head on over to our app or our website for more information. Now, where are my married, engaged, and dating people at? On Friday, March 18th, we'll be hosting a devoted couples night led by pastors Jonathan and Joanne Brozozog. Registration is only $40 per couple, so make sure you bring your boo thing and let's learn about this together. And guess what? The fun doesn't stop there. The next day on March 19th, we are hosting a free leadership seminar. This event is open for anyone in leadership on a dream team, a life group leader, or anyone desiring to become a leader. With, yep, you guessed it, Pastor Jonathan Brozozog. Registration is now open, so go sign up. And fellas, guess what? On that Monday, March 21st, we'll be hosting another Man Up Monday, led by, yep, Pastor Jonathan Brozozog. So make sure you lock arms with your brothers and let's pack this place out together. And ladies, we did not forget about you. Our Women's Radiant Conference Urgency is set to take place on May 20th through the 21st. This isn't just another conference. It is a wake up call for women to get in their word and prepare for the return of our savior. The early bird specials are set for $49, but don't wait till the last minute because prices will be jumping up to $69. We can't wait to see you there. Well, church, I know we threw a lot at you today. And if you missed any of the announcements, check out our Our Life Church app and follow us on Instagram at Restoration Life Church. Well, Familia, say it with me. To listen to us on the go, you can listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, or podcast. We, we hope, hope you enjoyed today's, today's message. message. He gave you me. And I'm so glad to be here. I hope you're just as glad to be here as well. That's the beauty of God. He, he's humorous at the same time serious. Right? We don't hear from individuals. We hear from God. And he puts people in our lives. And I just happen to be here today with you. And you happen to be here with me. I want to welcome, are there any visitors here for the first time? Can you just rate, ah, welcome. Glad you can join us. Anybody else here for the first time? Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. You know, you're not just in God's house, you're in our house. And so we welcome you. I want you to know that at the end of service, as you walk out, just keep going through those straight through those doors and into the next set of doors. And there'll be folks to greet you, just to share more of who we are and have a gift for you as well. We want you to leave here equipped, changed, ready to walk in the faith that God's about to give you. I want to welcome all of you who are family here today, which is all of you. I'm so grateful to be back. Uh, I was in Arizona talk more about that in a minute. And I want to welcome all of you online who are with us today. We, we wish you could be here in person, but we understand that these times are different. And so we're glad that you're able to join us on our online service. So as you know, uh, Pastor Eddie's not here, Pastor Roxanne. They're, they're at Mercy Hill Church in Chula Vista with Pastors Jesse and Martha Gutierrez. 
That's uh, another part of our church. They have our same DNA through REACH, and so they're part of the RLCC Fellowship. So not only are we going to get God's Word and, and, and hear today, but it's also being shared in another area. And wherever Pastor Max and Pastor Teresa are, whether they're resting or relaxations, whatever it is they're doing, I'm sure they're sharing the good news. They're being the light. And that's who we need to be when we leave here today as well. We need to be the light at all times. So as I said, I just returned from Arizona. And uh, it was funny, I went to get in my car this morning. I haven't driven it in over a week because we took a rental. I went with my family. There was a purpose. But I, saw, I got this on my car. And I'm sure some of you have gotten this before too, but it says, we buy junk cars. <laughs> Is that a hint? Man, God is so funny. It's funny because earlier last year I said, I'm going to stop driving at the age of 60, which I just turned in October. And so I'm still driving, though, and I think this is a hint. We buy junk cars. <laughs> in any case, uh, I had a wonderful time with my family. I, I, I hope you guys, when you're with family, you just honor them and and respect them. In fact, can we just give a round of applause and honor for those who serve, right? That was an incredible moment of worship. And, and not just here, but it's happening in kids' life as well. It's happening in seekers. You know, a lot happens here all at once. And it doesn't happen just by coincidence. It takes preparation. It takes time. It takes energy. It's like preparing a meal. And so we should honor one another. And so I'm so grateful. And it's all for the glory of God. That's what it's for. So I have two grandsons. One's uh, just turned seven. The other one, uh, two years old. The two-year-old, I don't know how this came about. You know, I like to go by G-Paw. I've shared with him I'm G-Paw. He probably doesn't even know my name. But it turns out he, he says it this way. He says, big dog. <laughs> I don't know where he got that, but I love it. Big dog. Big dog. So I have some pictures I want to show you. We went to Arizona because um, my daughter and her husband, uh, they opened up a franchise in Arizona. And I have this picture here for a reason. Um, not just because beautiful family, I love them all, and, and my grandkids, but um, they opened up a Mr. Uh, fries, men. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's comfort food. It's French fries. Any, everything French fries. So they're all over the place. They happen to have one in Arizona. But do you see that? No, no, go back. You're too quick. You, do you see that stadium in the background? That's Arizona State University. You know what that stadium's called? Diablo Stadium. Do, do you know what the name of their team is? Sun Devils. I think they were planted at the corner of that stadium so that when folks come out, they can be the light. Because there's some words there that need to change. I understand we got Angels Stadium and we got the Angels. But listen, we're to be the light everywhere. And that's the reason I put that there is I think they were planted there for a purpose. They don't even know it yet. Let's look at the next picture. So there's my wife and my two grandchildren, and do you see me? <laughs> Big dog. <laughs> so funny. We, we, if you never spent time in Arizona, you really should at some point. Scottsdale has a beautiful spot for the children. It's called the Boardwalk. They got anything and everything. They got a dinosaur exhibit. They got a butterfly exhibit. They got the number one aquarium in the United States there. Um, it just keeps getting better. And then at the end of our trip, go ahead to the next picture. We, uh, we happened to go to Wolf Lodge. Have any of you been there before? What an experience for the kids. I learned so much there from those folks there that I could bring back to kids' life, that I could bring back to the kids' life at our REACH conference. There, I was so pumped up and excited. Uh, and, and you can see they're so pumped up and excited. And so they gave these ears and... You had to do the howl to become part of the pack. It was really an, an amazing experience. Thank you for sharing those photos. So, you know, when you're on a trip and you're traveling, it's hard to keep children, certain age, entertained. 
And so we did our best. And my wife, uh, she brought these cards. And, and you ask these questions, and it helps you think, and it just kind of engages everybody. And one of the questions that came up was, uh, it struck me as I was driving. I was the driver. Um, she was ex- uh, giving this question to everyone. What superhero would you like to meet as an adult? Think about that. What superhero do you have, you know, maybe as a child that you would like to meet as an adult? Do you have one? Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I watch them because my grandson, and they like that. They also like the Ninja Turtles. Oh, and Blippi. How many of you know about Blippi? Man, I'm in love with that guy. He's got the perfect job, right? He travels from place to place, always up, always excited, sharing to the children at different locations, all went for children. It's like a a continuous Disneyland, so to speak. But so, you know, my grandson, the oldest, he said, I'd like to see Sonic, that's a character. He, he, he's kind of into Sonic right now. And then they asked me, and I said, you know, I've met my superhero. And they said, who's that? And I said, Jesus. In fact, he's with us right now in this car. All it did is open up conversation. That, that's how we need to be, the light, right? And, and so that opened up more conversations with my grandson and I. Even when we got to the dinosaur museum, How do you explain dinosaurs? Billions of years. Well, I know how. And we share that. And after, at the end of the day, he goes, Grandpa, I know you're right. What you said is right. I can't understand it, but you're right. I go, I know. Some things we can't understand yet. But God created all living land animals on the sixth day. Dinosaurs were created then. And if you can't understand that, that's okay. But that's what God says. It may not go with what People say, scientists say, billions of years, but that's okay. God's going to work it out. Now, the other thing, we were at a fast food restaurant. And on the soda fountain, it struck me. Their slogan, it, it said this. It said, enjoy the new world options. You know, for a guy who's in Revelation all the time, and I'm focused on that, And a company that puts that on their fountain, soda fountain, enjoy the new world options. It's where it's headed. The new world order, it's going to have new options. Enjoy it. Because this is what we live for. No, we don't live for this world. We live for the next. And so we need to stay focused. And then, you know, when we got home and we're relaxing and I'm in bed with my oldest and we're just talking and we're playing this rhyme game. And he says, what rhymes with this and what rhymes with that? And I said, I got one. What rhymes with Shane? That's his name. What rhymes with Shane? You know what he said? He said pain. And then he went on to say, and you know I've experienced a lot of pain in the seven years I've lived. (laughs) It was funny at first to me too. But then I thought, he's got more life to live and there's more pain coming. And I need to prepare him. We need to prepare ourselves. This is why we meet on Sundays. This is why we come together. And I know we've been sharing in a message called Red Flags. And I'm going to continue with that message. And our anchor thought, it says, if we heed the wisdom of the warning, we will not have to reap the consequences of the experience. That includes pain. So if we heed the wisdom, we don't have to experience the trauma Because we've learned from the experience of others sometimes, but we learn from what God says in his word. And then we can live it out, knowing that we'll be victorious. You know, we get this scripture from Proverbs 1, 32, 33. And I'm using uh, this version here. It says, sin and self-satisfaction bring destruction and death. Sounds like pain to me. But if you listen to me, it says, you will be safe and secure without fear, without disaster. How many of you want that? Then all you have to do is heed the wisdom. But you know, it's not enough to know. It's not enough to have wisdom. Look, you and I, we went to school, you know, till we're age 20 at least, some of us into college. We learned a lot of stuff. Do you apply it? 
No. You see, it's not enough to have the knowledge. We have to do something with it. It has to be applicable in our lives, and that's what the Word is saying here. It's applicable. It's there. It's open to everyone. It's available. It calls out. Wisdom is there. And when you get it, are you happy with it? Do you do something with it? Or do you turn away from it and go your own way still? That's difficult. That's discipleship. When you really want something one way, and wisdom says, probably not a good idea, now you have to make a decision. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Pastor Eddie shared last week in the book of Joshua, do you recall, even the week before about Jericho. Jericho was a huge city with fortified walls. And, you know, they, Israel should have never, ever broken those walls. But it was only because of God's mercy and grace that was allowed to happen. And then they go to the next battle, the city of Ai. And, and as he, he shared so eloquently last week, I was a weak town. It should have been easy to take. It wasn't fortified like Jericho, but Israel didn't heed the wisdom. And they weren't supposed to take the plunder. And one of them did. And as we know, sin isn't public or isn't private. It's, it's personal and it's public because it hurts others. And we found that out in that lesson, chapter 6 and chapter 7. But then in chapter 8, things got better for them. They, they took care of the sin. They repented. Things took place. And then they took over I and they took over other cities. And, as Pastor Eddie said, all the spoils went to them. That's how God is. He takes us from failure, as he said, to favor. How many of you want his favor? I know I do. I do. Let's pray. We need to take time out to pray, even during our busy days during the week. We, we really need to take those times. You know, there's so much need in this body and in the world now. You see the world, things going on in the Ukraine? The, the world's at unrest, and it's been at unrest for a very long time. I, I was just on my phone prior, you know, encouraging someone in another part of the country, and, and he, he's down. Do you see what's going on in the world? It's not looking good. And I got these problems in my life, and it's not looking good there either. And all I had to do was say, look up, because the time is near. His return is soon, sooner than later. We couldn't have said that 3,000 years ago, but we can say that now. The time is near. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. It is a word that is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts and separates. And so, Lord, we want you to use that sword in a mighty and powerful way in our lives to separate us from our fleshly ways and let us be guided by your Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, that our ears are unplugged so that we can receive hearts that maybe are a bit hardened now. Let your word soften the soil of our hearts so that we can hear and that we can do as you asked in communion. Do this because you did that. And so help us with that as we go our way here in your precious, in your holy, in your mighty name, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, then we all say, amen. How many of you know that just like Joshua and the Israelites had marching orders, you and I have marching orders? I want to focus on just 10, and I call them the 10 red flags, and I share this in kids' life, and I'm going to share this with you so that when you leave here today, you'll be able to share it as well. And that you can share it with someone else so that they can share it with someone. You see how that works? The light starts to get turned on. You know, our prayer should always be, Lord, you do and you are sovereign over the whole creation. Every country, 
every city, every neighborhood, every house, your light needs to shine. And if it's not shining in your house, we need to start there. And I can't think of 10 red flags better than what God gave us in Exodus. You're going to find this in Exodus chapter 20. I only say that as reference. You can go to it at any time. But it's the Ten Commandments. You know, I asked the children in kids' life, how many commandments are there? Ten. Good. Can you give some to me? And they gave them to me. And at the end, we had 15. Something's not right here. You added five. How do we do that? If we don't know them, how are we going to know what sin is? Because the whole point of the commandments wasn't for us to keep them because we can't unless we have Christ. The only thing that the commandments were given is to show us that we can't keep them, to show us what sin looks like, to show us when we sin so that we know how to then come back to him and repent and then be forgiven. And then be restored. That's what the Ten Commandments are for. So I'm going to give them to you in order. We're going to go one at a time. And you're going to do it with me. You have ten fingers. I think there's a reason God gave us ten fingers to remind us of these ten red flags. And then one of the kids said, what about my ten toes? I said, you need to hear it again. So he gives you a chance to repeat it. (laughs) Then another kid said, what if those children that don't have arms? (laughs) It's where children go. You got to answer them. I go, well, do they have toes? Yeah, some of them, but not all of them. You mean they have no arms and no toes? Yes. You know what that tells me? And I said to her, I said, look, if they have no arms and they have no legs or toes, they can't do things and they can't go anywhere. They can't sin. They don't need these Ten Commandments. (laughs) Look, if you're not serving... And I'm going to put a plug in kids' life. You're not getting the full life God gives you through Jesus Christ. It's in serving that we grow in our faith and that they others grow too. So commandment number one. Do you all know this one? What's the first one? Yeah, that's your version. That's God's version. It's long. The kids can't remember that. Come on, keep it simple. There's only one God. Right? One God. One God. Put your finger up. One God. That's the first commandment. Number two, put your fingers up. Keep them up. What's the second commandment? No idols. Don't bow down to idols. They get this. You're going to get it too. They got it at the first time. Third one. What's the third one? What? The Sabbath? Close. You see, that's where we get mixed up. And when the enemy comes and changes things up, we don't know. And so the third one is keep, not keep Holy Sabbath. The third one is don't use the Lord's name. Don't dishonor him. Don't use it in vain. So we say to the kids, don't dishonor God's name, right? Put it over your mouth. Don't dishonor. Don't say things you shouldn't be saying about God. That's number three. Fourth one, keep holy the Sabbath. I go like this. It's like a pillow. When you're asleep, you can't sin. You're pretty holy. Keep holy the Sabbath. The other thing is one of the kids said, well, I thought, and this is an older kid, I thought Sabbath was on Saturday. I go, you're right. That's Old Testament. You know, we've grown up since then. We have the New Testament. Jesus came on the scene. And things were moved from Saturday to Sunday. And that's the beginning of the week. And so in the Old Testament, we rested on the last day of all the work we did, like God. But in the New Testament, We rest on the first day of the week, and then we work. And that's why we work, because he gave us rest. You see how things have changed? And the enemy will work at you. And and before you know it, you're working every day of the week, and you have no rest. And then you wonder, what's wrong with my life? What's wrong with my life? We need to keep the order. Number five, what's that one? Honor your father. And your mother, that's sign language, father and mother. So now you just learned some sign language. Honor your father and your mother. You know what? This is the most common mistake the children make. And there's a reason for this. They say, honor your mother and your father. Honor my mom and my dad. The scripture has father first, then mother. Where's the dads in the children's lives? What's happening? 
I'll tell you what's happening. The enemy is getting in. We have more children in our kids' life with no fathers. Mothers do the best they can. I get it. We need more men in kids' life, men. They need to see men in kids' life. I'm speaking to you. No, I'm not speaking to you. God is speaking to you. Let him work on your heart. If that's your desire, come see me. Let's get you into kids' life. So we, number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, it's an easy one. Here's the sword. Don't murder. Don't murder, right? You know, we laugh, but we murder all the time. When you are so angry that you want to lash out at somebody or you can't sleep and it goes on and on, the next thing you know, you're still angry and you can't understand why. Two years ago, something happened to you and you haven't let go. Don't murder, right? Number seven. Well, here's a couple that just got married and here's the world. Honor each other. I know it says don't commit adultery. Little kids don't understand what that is. They will when they get older, not because they do it, because they know the difference. Honor one another. Honor. Are you honoring your spouse every day? That's what it takes. It takes work, but it should also be fun, like when you first met. We would do a lot less counseling here if we just honored one another. Number eight, we'll take those three fingers and grab them. Do not steal. Don't take things that aren't yours. Number nine, what is it? Do you know? What? Don't lie. Keep it simple. Kids like it simple. Don't lie. Cover your face again. Don't lie. And then number ten, what's this one? Don't covet. Don't take things, don't want things that aren't yours. God's blessed you with what you have. Be happy with what you got. Right? Number 10. There you go. And if you didn't quite get it all, you can watch it again. They're re recording this. <laughs> really, it takes all of a minute. I explained a little bit, but it takes a minute. Do that with your children at home tonight. Refresh their memory. You'd be surprised. They probably still remember it's simple. You got ten fingers, they do something, and they explain the ten commandments. You know, then Jesus came along, right? And Jesus said what? He said, love God, love people. That explains it all. Well, if you look at these ten commandments, the first four is about loving and honoring God, and the others are about honoring people and loving people. And they really got that from the Old Testament in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus. It's not like new news. Jesus just simplified it because he knows what? He knows that we're like kids. We just need to hear the simple of it. Honor God, honor people. So we're going to be in chapter 4 of Matthew right now. You can go to your Bibles if you carry them or if you have them on your phone. But chapter 4, verse 1. I can't think of anyone better to go to to see the picture of how to have victory, not only over these 10 red flags, but every red flag you ever come across. And that's Jesus Christ. And so we're going to see how he did it. Now, we're coming off the heels of chapter 3, where he was baptized. He was on the, on the mountaintop, so to speak. You know, the Holy Spirit came upon him in power. For what purpose? Because he was born by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lived in him, but now he comes upon him in power for the ministry he's about to take place in, and that's the same for us. Do you know that we have three baptisms the next service? That's awesome, and I, my prayer is at every baptism, the Holy Spirit comes upon that person because that person should already have Jesus and the Holy Spirit in them. Why? Because that happens when we are born again. We just confess it. We, we realize we're sinners. We, we realize Jesus paid the price, and we realize that we need him, and we want to invite him in. You already have him. So baptism doesn't save you. You're already saved. 
Baptism is a whole nother purpose. And if you're in DNA, you're going to learn more about that. So Jesus is on this mountaintop experience of being baptized as these folks will be next service. But it wasn't shortly after that he goes down into the valley. He's, he's directed by the Holy Spirit, it says, into the desert to be what? Tempted. It says this, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You find that kind of odd? Why would he be, want to be tempted? Why would the Holy Spirit do that? Well, I think for two reasons. To reveal to us who he is. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, he declares that Jesus is the second Adam. We know the first Adam. The first Adam was in a beautiful garden. And this last Adam, Jesus Christ, is in a forsaken desert. The first Adam ate freely except for one forbidden fruit. The last Adam ate nothing for 40 days. The first Adam was physically strong. But the last Adam, Jesus Christ, is on the verge of death after fasting for 40 days. The first Adam blew it. In fact, I like to call him the ultimate Adam bomb. He bombed out. But the last Adam conquered sin, conquered death, conquered the enemy, took care of those red flags, and so he is our superhero. And the second reason he did this is to relate to us. He became like us that he might relate to us. And so in every temptation you and I ever experience going forward, and he's experienced it all, the hope is that you can overcome it because he lives in you, and he's done it before, and he'll do it again. He'll do it again. So verse 2 says, And he had fasted 40 days, 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. Do you find that odd? I don't know if you fasted. How many of you fast? What's the longest you fasted? A a day? A week? 40 days. days. I love it. What happens as you go through those 40 days? (laughs) Yeah, but if you notice, and I've noticed this, your appetite becomes less. In fact, at some point, I don't even want food anymore. My stomach's so shrunk, I don't need it. It's done. The pain and the hunger goes away, and then here it says, his hunger returns. You know, physiologists tell us that as you're close to death, that last bit of fight in your flesh asks for more food. It starts to get hungry again. That's why you'll experience, and I experienced it with my dad. The day he died, he had the biggest breakfast I've ever seen him eat, and I got to cook it. But he died that evening. His hunger returned. So keep in mind, when it says Jesus' hunger returned after being in the desert for 40 days, it's because he was near death. And then that's when the enemy comes at him, and that's when he comes at us. If we read further, it says, uh, verse 3, Now when the tempter, Satan, came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, if, circle that, put that on your head in big marker, like bold, if, Because that's the temptation. You are the Son of God. Command these stones to become bread. Because he knows how weak he was. That if, that's a big if. Because he just heard at his baptism from the Father, he just was identified by the Father as his beloved Son. And here the enemy comes at him, if. How many ifs do you and I get? Look, if you're the child of God, Why are you alone? Why are you thinking these thoughts? Why are you expecting to do this? Why is it that your bills are piling up? Why is it that all this trauma is in your life? Why is it you have no peace? You're not the son of God. That's how the enemy comes at us. If, if, if. The enemy whispers in our ears. Do it on your own power. Do it in your own faith. Because the faith God gave you is worthless. That's what he's saying. But Jesus knew better, and we should know better. Because if you'll notice as we go through this, that he defeats the enemy. He tackles those red flags with Scripture. You need to know your Scripture. You have to know your Scripture. 
And so Jesus knew the Father's timing is best, and so he was patient as part of fruit of the Spirit. So Jesus didn't give in to the temptation. And then in verse 4 it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He used Scripture. And Scripture says every word from God is God-breathed. It's profitable for teaching, for correction, reproof, training in righteousness to make us complete, equipped, for all the good work that he wants us to do. Jesus here is telling the enemy, it's not so much about the physical food. It's the spiritual food that I have. That's what's important. How many of you are eating in the spirit every day? Oh, you come once a week for an hour and you get 15, 20 minutes. Once a week is not enough. You're going to starve your spirit. You and I probably eat three, four, five times a day from meals to snacks. You do that for seven days a week, 365 days. Next thing you know, we're like this. That's how our spirit needs to be. It needs to be filled and overflowing so that then we can share it and get rid of it. So we can be filled again and overflowing and so we can share it. That's the picture here. In verse 5, then the devil said, you know, he takes him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So the first temptation, he was tempting about the Father's provision. Now he's tempting about the Father's protection. But Satan knows Scripture just like we should know Scripture, and we should know it better than him. We should be spending our time in the Word more and less on the TV more in his word, less on the phone. More in his word, less on TV. We should be feeding ourselves. But Jesus knew he left something out of Scripture. He left out in all God's ways. See, God's way isn't to throw myself over and let him protect me. That's not his will. That's not his ways. We are not supposed to tempt God, and that's what he says to the devil. Do not tempt the Lord your God. Don't test him. I had a child tell me this. Well, if he's going to protect me, I could do anything. I could run across the freeway. Really? That's not God's will for you. It's not wise. It's not good. So Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. In other words, the Father will provide for me. The Father's going to protect me. And I'm not going to test him to satisfy you, Satan. That's what Satan does. You know when I had that picture up here of my family in the very beginning? The other reason I use that is because I realize the enemy is after them. The enemy is wanting to cheat, steal, destroy, lie that family. I love that family. The more I look at them, the more I see them, the more I realize how important it is that I play a role in their life as they play a role in my life. We need to be looking at one another that way. We need to hold each other accountable. Verse 8, again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus says to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Now Satan is questioning the Father's promise. He's offering a shortcut for, for Jesus. I'm going to give you the whole kingdom, all the world, because right now the enemy owns it. Actually, Jesus owns it because he's already been on the cross and he's reclaimed it, and it's just going to be a matter of time before he returns. But before all this, before the cross, the enemy owned it. It was a real temptation. He had the ability to give Jesus all of the kingdom because Adam gave it away. But Jesus realized there's no shortcuts. Jesus knew the Father promised things, all things to him in his time and in his plan, and he was going to let it continue that way. 
Can I have the worship team come up? Then I like this one in, in the next and final verse here. It says, then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. The devil left him. You know, it didn't say the devil left him for good. It didn't say the devil left him and he'll never come back. Because he came back through Judas and others. The devil will use people in your lives. If he can't get to you directly, he's going to use people in your lives, your family, your friends, your co-workers to try to get you down. That's what he's wanting to do. And that's what Jesus experienced too. But for a moment, it says the devil left him. You want the devil to leave you when you're being tempted? Quote the scripture. Realize that you're protected, that you're provided for, that God's got a plan for your life. And so it says the angels came and ministered to Jesus. Jesus overcame the temptation with the sword of the Spirit, which is Scripture. He was led and fed by the Spirit. That's the example for you and I. If the Word forbids it, so do I. That's what our motto should be. Serve the Father and Him alone. Jesus went from the desert with devil's food cake and ends up with angel food cake because He was patient Because he understood the scripture? Because he loved and knew the Father? Intimately. Lovingly. So we see here most temptation comes one of three ways. It's going to deny the Father's provision in your life. When you're down and out at your worst, in weakest moment, that's when he's going to come. And just tell the enemy, the Lord provides. Leave me in the name of Jesus. That's the lust of our flesh, is to follow our flesh, to follow our desires. The second thing is he'll try to deny the Father's protection in your life, that you're no longer protected. But you are protected. But our pride wells up. That's why Satan left heaven. His pride was so great. He no longer wanted the protection of the Father. He no longer wanted to be like the Father. He wanted to be the Father. Don't let your pride get in the way. Pride is the number one sin. And number three, he'll do, come at you and deny the Father's promises to you. He'll deny the promises of the Father that he has for me. That's the lust of our eyes. We see things and we want more. We want to follow our neighbors and have what they have. We want to see those commercials and desire more. Be comfortable. Be grateful. Be happy and joyful of what the Lord has given you, what the Lord has given us. If you've not realized this yet, there's only one way victory comes one way. And the power lies in our submission to the Word, Jesus Christ, not in its, just, not just reciting it because you know it, but reciting it because it's a weapon to be used because you own it. It's not enough to know it. You have to own it. Satan flees when he hears us say, I do the Word, not I can quote the word. There's many Jehovah Witnesses that come to my door that can quote scripture better than me. They don't know the Father through Jesus Christ the way I do, the way you do. Don't be intimidated by the enemy. My grandson, we were in the wave pool and wolf lost and a wave overtook him and he started panicking and I pulled him up I said look at me and he calmed down he just he's out of the water he's fine we need to keep our eyes on Jesus when you keep your eyes on Jesus you can walk on water you can calm the storm you can move the mountains you can slay the giants in your life 
but stay focused on Jesus. Satan is powerless to Jesus. This card says, we buy junk cars. Jesus buys new life for you. Let's bow our heads for a moment in reverence to the Lord. No looking at anyone else. Clear your mind. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move us. I said the enemy is powerless to Jesus, but not to you. Unless you have Jesus in you. If you've never received Jesus, if you've never made the claim, you've never proclaimed it in your life, you've never staked that in your life, now's the time to do it. If that's you, raise your hand. Just raise your hand for me where you're sitting. You realize you're a sinner. You realize that your life cannot go the way it continues. Because if you do, the enemy will have his way with you. If that's you right now, and you're at the end of your rope, so to speak, and the Lord is tugging on your heart, and you want Him because you need Him, you desire Him, that's you. Raise your hand right now. Amen. Amen, brothers. Amen, sister. Anyone else? This is the time to do it. Let Him have your life. And when you give him your life, and you give him every closet of your life, you have rooms in your heart, every hidden closet will be lit up. But he does that to restore us. And when he does that, he'll give you a new life, a new life forever, not just here, but in heaven. A life, a life that is so worth living. You give him your keys, and he gives you the kingdom keys. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise your hand high and proudly because the Lord is calling you today. I want you to do something for me. This isn't for me. This is for you. Take the stand. It's like when Joshua led the Israelites to march around because God told them, I want you to get up out of your seat and come right here. I want to pray for you individually right here in front of me. Get up out of your seat and just stand right here and let us pray with you and welcome you into the kingdom of God. This is the spot. And for the rest of us, for the rest of us, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what the enemy strongholds have in your life. But this is the time to repent, as Pastor Eddie said, as the word says, repent. Give it up, give it away, and then be forgiven. This altar is open for the sacrifices of our hearts. The rest of us can line the sides, but new believers I want right here, right here in front of me. I want to personally pray for you. God bless you. Man, you're standing so straight now, and I don't mean just physically, but you're standing in the presence of the Lord at His altar. You are a new man, new woman, new child, new, new to the family of God. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Father, I come before you. We come before you. And say this with me. Father, I love you. Lord, I want more of you and less of me. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I know in my sin. And you saved me. You took my punishment on the cross. And I believe you when you did that. And I repent of all my ways. And I don't look backwards. I look forwards. I look upwards. I hear your voice. I seek your will and know your will. Lord, I proclaim you as my Lord and Savior, the King of my heart, the King of my thoughts. You are so good and so mighty. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let's worship the Lord.
into this body, into this fold, that they can call this their home until they reach our real home in heaven and help us, all of us, to do more your will, to hear your voice, to look upwards, not backwards, not left and right, but to remain focused on you. We thank you. The Lord bless all of you and shine his face upon all of you and his goodness reign in all of you until we meet again. In his name we pray, amen, amen. Have a great week. If this message spoke to you, please leave a comment right down below and don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We cannot wait to see you next time.